In this video, I'd like to do two things. Number one, I'd like to showcase the solution and even a little bit of the behind the scenes for a challenge that I created for the NomCon Capture the Flag EU 2022 competition that myself and another great group of friends and hackers hosted this past weekend from December 16th to December 17th. It is a small challenge. It is a simple challenge. It is in the warmups category, but surprisingly has even the lowest number of solves within that warmup category. And number two, point number two, what I'd like to do with this video, I'd like to tell a story. I'd like to showcase, I don't know, just a little bit of an Easter egg, maybe some origin story to how this challenge came about and where it came from. Because truth be told, I made this challenge, oh, it's 2022 right now, so five years ago, maybe even six years ago. I'd like to uh, maybe tell a little bit of the background history on what the heck this thing is. But before we dive in, let me give a quick moment for some sweet love to today's sponsor. Developers are constantly changing the digital landscape. But building secure software isn't always easy, especially in growing applications worked on across massive teams. Companies end up with mountains of code and they have to make a choice, stay competitive or stay secure. But with Sneak, you don't have to choose. Sneak helps bake security into the software development lifecycle. Sneak helps you scale and streamline by automatically scanning your code, dependencies, containers, and configuration files, finding and fixing vulnerabilities in real time. And it is super easy to use. You can sign up for free with my link below, import your repositories, and there, Sneak just finds your vulnerabilities. You can fix all these issues with just a single click. Sneak automatically opens a fixing pull request so you can just merge them into your repository and move on. And it fits seamlessly into all of your existing tools. IDEs, the command line, CICD pipelines, cloud infrastructure, and more. Millions of developers love Sneak. And you can see for yourself. Get started for free with my link below and develop fast and stay secure with Sneak. Alrighty, now before we dive into the showcase, I do want to tell a little bit of the story uh, so we can kind of, I don't know, set the stage, get some context going here. Because, so for folks that don't know, and I, you probably might know in case other folks have seen some of my other content, but I attended the United States Coast Guard Academy for my undergrad education. Four years of college there, yada, yada, yada. And it was interesting because look, we didn't have a uh, computer science or cybersecurity degree. Something to study there, I had to sit through uh, a electrical engineering. And I, uh, you know, learned all about signals and systems and stuff that I never really use for my day-to-day -day life and what I actually do for my occupation right now. Anyway, uh, I had been part of the growing, cultivating, and now sort of booming uh, cyber team. I was on the boots on the ground first to create sort of, it's sort of the club, but really became the sport because a lot of the military academies, institutions have you have to play a sport, you know, from 1600 to 1800. Oh, you got to go play football or or soccer or whatever. Somehow we swindled a bunch of admirals and generals that we would turn cybersecurity and capture the flag into a sport. Uh, so hey, I was building up and creating this cyber team. And I eventually, when it became my senior year, my first class year, I was the team captain. I was the cyber team captain. And one thing that we do as part of the cyber team was uh, actually kind of entertain and put on some shows and presentations for a lot of VIPs, you know, very important people that might come and tour the academy or spend time with the cadets, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so we would have like, hey, undersecretaries or, you know, government officials and just cool VIPs people that would come hang out and we'd want to give them a good show. Uh, so at one point, I don't know if folks are familiar, but we had uh, the Commandant come by. And this is the Commandant of the Coast Guard. This is again, for folks that aren't aware, like the top dog, the head honcho, the, you know, the, the top of the food chain for that branch of the service, the Coast Guard. And that's like the highest rank that you can be in the Coast Guard officer corps. It's kind of like the president or the prime minister or whatever, you know, a big equivalent in that there. So they came by and we were going to give them a show. We were put on a presentation and we thought, you know, maybe for the first time we will give a, a hands-on interactive presentation. Uh, so we created, or I created this challenge, a little activity that they would be able to play and do. And again, these are VIP people that don't do the cybers or all that stuff. So we wanted to dumb it down and make it, sorry, water it down is the politically correct way. I 
suppose, uh, and give them something that they could interact with. So that's what this is. That's what this was. Again, five, six years ago, however long ago. Uh, and I thought maybe it would be a kind of a fun gimmick to include that in this capture the flag. So with that said, let's finally do this thing. But let me give you that context and that that is where this came from. And I want to tell you more of the story once we're done here. So here I am on my computer screen inside of my Kali Linux virtual machine, and I'm at ctf.nomcon.com. I'm going to go ahead and click in to go to the challenges page. And this challenge is baby's first heart bleed. The description is here. Hey kids, want to learn how to hack? Start here to foster your curiosity. Again, this is a warm-ups challenge. It has about over 600 solves, but again, even the lowest in the warm-ups category. So kind of an interesting thing, but there's no file attachment. There is no thing to download. You just go ahead and click on the start button and then you spin up this thing. So let me show you what this thing is. Once it's created, we get a little connect with prompt with a netcat command that we can go and connect to the host and port here. I'll right click and copy that. And then I'll hop over to my terminal where I am inside of the nomcon folder and we built all the challenges within here. Uh, but let's slap in this. Let me go ahead and create this here. I will go ahead and connect and fingers crossed my ASCII art will show here for me, but we've got Heartbleed. It says, hey, thank you for connecting to the server. To verify if the server is still there, please supply a string. And you're given a prompt, a little input where you could supply a string. By default, within these square braces, it notes, okay, maybe the default string will be Apple. Uh, anyway, we could enter and cram through this if we really wanted to, and I'll do that, but first let me just hit Apple to show you what that says. And then it says, what is the length of the string that you provided? It adds a little, again, optional default that you've just entered. Maybe that's a value of five, because that's the length of the word Apple. We could enter that as five, or just hit enter, because again, it's provided as default, and it says the server returned Apple just to get your input echoed right back out to you. And that's it. That is the service. That's how you interact with it. It just loops this again. And it's very small, primitive proof of concept example to showcase, hey, the heartbeat of a server or a serve is. Uh, very, very similar to folks that might be familiar with uh, that heart bleed vulnerability that this is alluding to here. So anyway, if I were to enter a different string, I'll enter the good old please subscribe. You'll note, oh, the length there that it calculated was 16. So I could hit enter on that because I don't want to maybe type that out. Server turned, please subscribe. There's that output. And we made this very leet, you know, with it typed all out and given all that out into the screen here so it's not just spit out all at once but hey one after the other just shows each individual character and that's the gimmick like hey we could enter hey john hammond and there it is but the length is where we might be able to get a little bit more curious and inquisitive because what if we supplied a different length value we ultimately get to control that right so could we not just say hey i want four characters rather than 12 well, then the server will return John, and that's it. Nothing about the John Hammond piece. So are you kind of catching my drift here? What could we do? What more could we do with this? What if I were to do something weird? Like, sure, let's enter Apple. I don't know. What if we got a length of negative one? Will it be able to do that? The server returned nothing. Odd. Okay, so let's get a little bit wild and weird. Let's say we just hit enter to get Apple again. Maybe rather than the length of five, we put in like 20, something wild. Uh, bigger than the number that's provided for us. Ooh, the server returns Apple at Apple at John Ham, because <laughs> my name's kind of getting truncated there. And hmm, maybe that is what we could latch onto. Maybe there's more data to be able to read other than what we just previously returned, right? So let's do something insane. Let's say we took Apple as the string we were providing, but gave it a length of like 2000 or something unruly. And then the server will return blah, 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 blah. Ooh, and there's the gimmick. I don't know if you can see it there. It's highlighted in green here. But the gimmick was that if we asked for more from the server than what we gave it, we would be able to leak out other data that might have been present there previously. In this case, just just a bunch of zeros, maybe some null bytes. I was considering just putting like hex values or other random things. It has to be printable. It can't just spit out nonsense, really, because the way that I store this is in a weird, different way. But ultimately, you've now solved the challenge right? Hey, you had the curious and inquisitive mind where you just thought, hmm, I wonder if I could ask for more than what I gave here and get different or new data that wasn't seen before. So ultimately, that's it. That's the flag. And that's the challenge. Just a small, simple, trivial little, hey, mental exercise. Uh, and there's our flag. We go ahead and submit that, paste that in. And it says, hey, yeah, you've already solved this. Yeah, good, 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 good. And that's it.
that was the gimmick here. Let me show you how that's put together uh, because it's kind of weird. I'll jump into the uh, baby's first heart bleed directory and then I'll show you here's our server.py as to how we crafted this thing. So originally, and maybe this is bad, maybe this is dumb. I was thinking about putting it into a whole nother file and using like the Python reload function. But all the data is stored within just this file itself. Like everything that you might be retrieving or pulling out from the server is there. Like if I turn on word wrap, hey, there's the junk here. But we could have made this anything, but I didn't want folks, because they are writing to this file themselves, I didn't want it to overload the thing. I didn't want it to uh, actually, you know, give it too much that it would just break or something wild. So ultimately, I, I put a limit on this. But it is, as you would expect, just sort of a simple socket server, spits out that dumb ASCII little toilet or figlet font, whatever you want to call it, that displays heart bleed. And we get a little class for a base request handler for our socket server and service. I have a convenience function here to slowly print out the characters or each individual thing that's displayed on the screen rather than just printing it all out instantly. It sort of has that type out effect. And I have my cutesy colors, maybe here and there, uh, print out all these parts and then loop to do this same input process as you've seen. To verify the server is still there, as in the gimmick with the heartbeat, uh, we get the prompt for the string and then the length with defaults being entered here. Uh, stupid, dumb stuff, probably bad code. I'm sure you can make fun of me in the comments if you'd like. But here again is the guard that I put. Look, if they put like way over 200,000 or 20,000 characters, no, 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 no. Uh, we're we're going to break this thing. Don't try and write that. But then we carve it out. Maybe, oh, okay, actually replace what was there, what wasn't there and spit it back into this file itself after we would have read it, so we could see what we would have retrieved. Uh, I added this stupid guard so that we could end up determining whether or not, hey, we're getting to the end delimiter of the data. Originally, you would just be able to leak the whole source code if you wanted to, um, but I, I, I kind of closed that up here. And then I made sure we could put the flag in green so it was more visible for folks. Again, being a warm-up category. And that's it. That's literally it. That's the service. That's all that it was. Kind of simple cell, dumb things here. And that's the gimmick. But I hope that you were able to kind of see with that, that's the idea of a small thing that didn't require coding, that didn't require knowing how to program or how to hack. Uh, it's just you know, that small sliver of curiosity and innovation where you're like, hmm, I wonder if I can get this to do something weird and never seen before. And back to our little story for some background context, that is why I put this together for the VIPs, for the very important people that would come tour and see what us little silly kidlets, uh, Coast Guard cadets are up to over at the academy here and uh, I thought it would give them something cool to get their hands on the keyboard. Now, uh, the way that we present this, and I'll see if I can get any pictures to showcase it, is that we're normally standing up with the screens and accessible while the VIP is sitting down. Um, and we're, you know, driving the show with our mouse and our keyboard to move through slides or give a presentation. Normally I'm like, hey, let's just do a demo of some SQL injection. But for this interactive one where we want to get that audience participation, we're like, all right, well, we'll, we'll get, put them in the driving seat. We'll hand them the keyboard and the mouse. So I did that for the all top dog, you know, head honcho of the, of the service here. And I handed him this keyboard and he takes it. And the way that I, again, am facing the opposite direction, you know, as, as I'm presenting to him, I hand him this keyboard uh, and he's receives it from me, sets it down, but does not turn it around. <laughs> He, he has the keyboard sort of upside down or like backwards and now doesn't know what to do, can no longer calculate or uh, function. And it's just the funniest thing, because how do you tell the top dog, you know, hey, head honcho here, uh, equivalent, like, I'm sorry, sir, you, Admiral, you need to turn it around. <laughs> Turn the keyboard the other way. Turns out, I would assume, you know, maybe maybe the, you know, top dog's head honcho's uh, top of the food chain probably doesn't get a whole lot of keyboard time. Military leaders may not always be kicking around on the old CTF scoreboard. Um, <laughs> but I thought that was fun. I thought that was silly. And maybe a good story to tell some friends and folks because, hey, you should know the orientation of the keyboard personally. They probably just don't get, hey, leaders of our world, you know? <laughs> 
I'm having fun. I'm having too much fun. But thanks so much for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed that showcase. Hope you enjoyed a little bit of the background story, the origin. Uh, and like, yeah, you know, that challenge was cooked together even crappy five or six years ago. Um, and a, a fun little maybe background context to it. So uh, and I can tell that story because this is years past and that person is no longer in the position. Uh, so we have some fun with it. But uh, thank you, thank you, thank you again and again. I would love to see your support. Like, comment, subscribe, etc. Support links in the description if you're up for that. But thank you for watching this video and we'll get into more super duper soon.